let's look at exponential decay, which is a de decreasing relationship. Uh, and we're going to look at two aspects of exponential decay. First is declining population, which is happening in cities like Detroit, where there were no jobs during the recession. People fled the, the city, and so all kinds of problems have been happening because of that. You know, stores leave, they don't have taxes to pay for things, they can't pay back their debts. Um, and so declining population is a big deal. Now, being in Austin, we don't deal with that because our city is growing exponentially. But there are cities that are not. And so let's say we have a city population that starts off at 5 million people. And during the recession, the population has decreased 15% per year. Now, I want to know what the population will be in five years. And so I haven't given you an exponential decay equation because we can actually figure this out without an equation. So if I look at t is time in years, and p is the number of people, at zero years, I have the 5 million, right? Because at the initial population was 5 million, so there you go. And I have to think about at year one, how do I figure out how many people there were? Well, I know 15% of the people left. So that means that 85% of the people stayed. So instead of taking the 5 million and finding 15% of it and subtracting off the 15%, I am just going to figure out how many people are left over by multiplying by 0.85. And so if I do, I get 4,250,000 people. And then at year two, I'm going to do the same thing. 15% of the people left, but I don't care about how many people left. I care about how many people are left over. So I'm going to multiply again by 0 0.85. And so then I get 3,612,500 people. Now I'm running out of space, which means I can't continue doing this year per year, but I can think about what's happening in the relationship. I am repeatedly multiplying by 0.85, which means that's my multiplier. And so I just have to figure out in five years how many times did I have to multiply by 0.85, which is five. And so I take the five million and I multiply it by 0.85 five times. And at the end of five years, I'm going to get 1,885,747 people remaining. And so now, if I'm going to figure out long-term trends, of course, then I can write an equation to model my population, and I can figure out how many people are going to be gone in 10 years if this doesn't change. And so in order to do this, I need to think about what I'm doing to get these numbers. Well, I took the 5 million people, and I multiplied it by how many people were left over, or the percent of the people left over turned into a decimal, which is 0.85. And I'm going to raise it to the number of years that this, this is happening. And so this is my equation that I can use to model my population. And this is an example of an exponential decay model. Now, decay models like this one always show you the amount remaining. Because if you're a city planner, you don't care about the people who left. You care about the people who are still in your city who you have to take care of. And so whenever you're given the situation, you're given a rate, which is always a percent who went away. Okay, that's not the percent who are left over, but the percent who left. Okay, now the factor that you need for your equation, the multiplier, will show the amount remaining. So this is the decay model that we're going to be using. y equals a, open parentheses, 1 minus r raised to the x, where a is the initial amount, r is that decay rate that's given to you as a percent that has to be converted to a decimal. x is going to be like the time, or whatever your independent variable is going to be, and y is going to be the amount remaining. Now what makes this decay compared to growth is that this number here, the 1 minus r, is going to be between 0 and 1, all right? So this number, it has to be between 0 and 1. Now, it's not negative because negative does not work in exponential, all right? It has to be between 0 and 1. And if you think about it, if I multiply something by 0, it's all gone. And if I multiply something by 1, it's the whole thing. It's the original amount. So something in between all gone and the original amount is getting smaller, right? It's, it's decreasing. The closer to zero, the faster the decay rate, the, the faster your population will go away. And that totally makes sense.
Now, like the growth model, we had you can use this to figure out when a population will reach a certain size. In order to do that, you either use the logarithm or you use your table. And I'm going to have you do that in class. I'm not going to do an example of that right now. What I want to look at, though, and I want to look at radioactive decay because remember when we talked about growth, we had this thing called doubling time? Well, for decay, we have something similar, but it's not doubling, it's called half-life. Half-life is defined as the amount of time it takes for one half of the original amount to decay away. And this is used to describe radioactive elements and basically how dangerous they are, or how long they're dangerous. So for example, so for example the half-life of uranium-238 is 4.46 billion years. And so what that means is if you have a gram of uranium-238, in about 4.46 billion years, half of it will have decayed away into a stable element that's no longer radioactive, but then you still have half a gram of uranium-238. And if you remember anything from science and radioactive elements, that radiation is not good for humans or life in general because, you know, it destroys cells, burns you, causes cancer, all kinds of bad stuff. So the longer the half-life, the slower the decay rate. And so a lot of times what you want to know is what is the half-life of something because you want to figure out how long it's going to be super dangerous. Now instead of using a real radioactive element and doing experiments with real radioactive elements, let's say I make up some element and we're going to call it hamsteronium. It's a radioactive element that according to studies of hamsteronium, it decays at a rate of 30% per century. And I have a 20 gram sample of hamsteronium. So right now this guy is radioactive. He's you know shooting off alpha, beta, and gamma particles. And in one whole century, 30% of him will have decayed away to something stable and no longer radioactive. So if I want to find the half-life of hamsteronium to tell everyone, hey, this is the half-life, this is how dangerous it's going to be, um, I need to write a model first. And so let's say that y is equal to the amount remaining of hamsteronium, and x is equal to the time in centuries, Okay, because I gave you the decay rate in centuries. So my model is going to be y equals the original amount, which is the 20 grams, uh, multiplied by the 1 minus the 30% written as a decimal raised to the x power. And if I want to simplify that model, I get 20 times 0 0.7 raised to the x. And so if I want to find the half-life, what I have to do is take this model and make a table. Now I don't have my graphing calculator with me, so I'm just going to make a little table by hand. So at time 0, I have 20. At time 1, I have to find 70% of 20, which is... Uh, 14. Then at time 2, I need to find 70% of 14, which is 9.8. Now, the half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of the substance to decay away. And since my original amount was 20, I'm looking for 10. And so I know between 100 and 200 years, because remember, these were time and centuries, that's my half-life. So half of it's going to remain and it's going to be closer to 200 because I have a 9.8 there, and 10 is closer to 9.8 than it is to 14. Now remember, this is when you use the graphing calculator to fine-tune your, your range, and you can actually use it to go by tenths or by hundredths to get a much better estimate for your half-life. So now for your check, I'm not going to have you write an exponential model or find some stuff out about it. We're going to do all that in class. What I want to know is if you could pick information out of the model. So I want you to figure out the initial value, the decay rate, and the decay factor for these three exponential decay models.